biases are, are so often unconscious and unintended. You know, that there, there, are, there are ways that we're sort of, we inherit ways of thinking from our culture, from previous generations, from other people. You know, with, with blindness, I mean, the, you, you look to, to any sort of popular song, I think the word, you know, because the word blind rhymes so easily with kind and find and, you know, all of these other things, that it's, it, it gets used all the time. You know, love is blind, uh, rage, blind rage, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Blindness sort of meaning uh, ignorance or lack of awareness. Which, which, you know, uh, some blind people aren't very aware. Many sighted people aren't very aware, right? Um, but we're, we live in a, con a, a culture where seeing is believing. We say, I see to, say, to, to mean I understand or I know, right? When, you know, so those things have become so closely linked, sometimes it's hard to separate them out. Believing is believing, right? Or hearing is believing, right? Knowing is knowing. It, it takes some extra mindfulness, I think, to, to be in this environment with, without, um, without navigating visually. I mean, about a year, year and a half ago, I was sort of in the middle of a process of looking for a deeper sense of community, uh, especially outside of, of my immediate work environment. And a, a woman I was dating was, was saying, hey, there's, there's you know, this dance class that I've always wanted to go to, and I've never quite had the, the courage to go on my own, and would you, would you come with me? And of course, and had this experience of, wow, right? here are my people. This is something I, I am meant to be doing. There's something familiar about this on, on a body level, and, uh, and I've been coming ever since. The analogy that I use is that it's, it's like dancing in a blizzard with a lot of anonymous bodies. That, that you know, there's enough sort of ambient noise, there's enough uh, actual sort of sound with the music that it's, it becomes very difficult to navigate orally. When I wasn't you know, coming with someone, you know, coming with a partner who I was dancing with primarily, it was, was fairly disorienting. Um, you know, and, and over time I sort of could develop a physical sense of the space to have, you know, okay, the stage is at one end, the door is at the other end, etc. Speakers are generally in these places, here are where the fans are. Uh, but the, the big transformation for me was, was in, in inviting uh, some of the regulars in the community sort of into play with how to engage with me as, as someone who's not seeing in this environment that's in some ways very much sort of set up to be overwhelming um, you know, with, with just all the sound and all the, the movement and everybody's in a different place here and there, and, uh, different people from one week to the next. A lot of the ways that, that sighted people connect, you know, eye contact or, oh, I see somebody moving in a way that draws me, or I look at this person and I'm just, I'm captivated by something. A lot of those don't work two ways with me. Um, and so inviting uh, sighted people to, to feel comfortable initiating contact even though we're not meeting our eyes. And really a sense of playfulness uh, and, and, uh, and I emphasize the invitation piece that it's not a 
there's no requirement. There's never a requirement to dance with anyone, right? But, but to feel invited to come and explore and, and, and connect. I move quickly when I'm dancing, but when I'm dancing on my own, I might move quickly in the air above me or in the space around me, or I've, I've kind of felt out with my feet, uh, you know, first to kind of get a sense of, oh, this space is open, and then I can kind of move, you know, through it, etc. And, and there's a piece, too, of like, you know, little bumps are going to happen. It's just part of the reality, and, and it's, I don't think there's anything particular to being a blind person about that, right? It's, it happens on the dance floor, you know, in general. What, what is my wish? What am I feeling? Or what, 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 what wants to move through me right now? And what energy can I bring to this? I mean, I suspect the feeling of that experience I don't know is any different for, for me than anyone. It's, 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 there's, there's a flow to it. There's a, there's a knowing, there's a connectedness, there's, there's um, an immediacy um, about it. I'm still, very aware, but it's not um, effortful thinking aware. Um, there's, there's an effortlessness that can move in, um, and it comes and it goes. Um, it's, it's, it's not something I can manufacture in any way. Uh, Stephen Cusisto, is a, a, an author, um, wrote the wonderful book Planet of the Blind, and he, he talks about um, opening the, the th thesaurus uh, to the word blind and, and just listing out what's there and it's extraordinary I mean, ignorant uh, crude violent uh, you know, uh, unknowing uh, you know it's just all and it goes on and on and on and on and on and and you know just sometimes bumping up against these things not not as you know anything that someone would consciously believe but just just our cultural story about what it means to see and what it means not to see and, um, and finding it useful to, to challenge that or to discard that and, and make some new maps. A friend of mine from Zimbabwe when I was in grad school, said, you know, in my culture, we have a saying that if, if you can walk, you can dance, and if you can talk, you can sing. And I expand that because I've met some people who cannot walk, who are spectacular dancers. But I love the spirit of that philosophy. It's sort of like, oh, I don't have to be a specialist. I don't you know, have to be deeply trained to inhabit. So with my right as a human being to move, and to experience that not just as function, but as expression or art or just pleasure, uh, that that's part of the human experience. I had this dance with somebody who had a watch on their on their right hand and had this really crazy hair. Do you have any idea who that was? You know, um, all of these things. 